What's up, guys? Welcome to the No Love Show. Not the official name of my new podcast. It's the first episode. Uh, so we're working on some things. We'll have you guys jump in at the end and throw some name suggestions out that we should take. Uh, we're going to jump into it. You know, my career, the move to flyweight. You know, you see it all around the tabloids, the MMA tabloids. It's the big news. Uh, jumping down into the division. This is something that I've always wanted to do. It's uh, been on my mind for a few years and spoke with coaches and teammates and, you know, management. Uh, to make sure that we're going to do this. This was a plan after the Sun Sal fight um, to go down. Obviously, I had COVID, and then Brandon and, and, and Davison went to a draw, so they had to rematch each other. I took the Rob Font fight because I didn't want to be sidelined for eight to nine months. Um, you know, I worked hard through COVID and to get back to you know get inside the octagon. Um, obviously, that wasn't my night. Hats off to Rob Font and his camp. Um, but the move to 25 is you know what I'm doing. I'm set on. Uh, very excited for this challenge, what it um, represents, what it brings. You know, a little bit of a weight cut I've never had to do in any of my career. Uh, I've always fought just at my weight, basically, 135, so it's been an easy cut for me. 125 will be a little bit more challenging, um, but just diet, you know, just diet and do everything right. I'm working with Dr. Matteo out of Italy. He's actually located in Santa Monica now, so we've been prepping for a few months now. I reached out to him. Uh, I put a little Instagram, you know, question on like who should I work with, you know, and and Dr. Mateo, I literally he probably had 200, 300 requests of his name, so obviously that's saying something. Uh, reach out to him, he jumped on the flight the next day, came up, we had lunch, and just you know talked everything through, what I wanted to do, my goals, my aspirations, uh, what he you know thought I could do, and you know, we just hit it off right there, so. Found the doctor, the nutritionist that we're gonna work with. It's been great. Um, my meal preps have been amazing. My energy has been felt great. I mean, I'm waking up at 1:45 already. 16 weeks out from the fight with Kaya Cara France. That's my next bout, December 11th in Vegas, to be determined. But Vegas is what they're saying. So uh, very excited for this fight. You know, this is a great opponent for me to jump into the flyweight division. Uh, very excited. Uh, how does it feel cutting down to, to 125, Cody? After a lot of people are, it's a tough cut at 135, but you feel like you have the, the body type for it and you're ready for it with your n nutrition? Yeah, I feel like definitely the body type for 125. I don't carry around a lot of mass, um, which would, you know, dying down to 130, 139. Sometimes I hit that in camp anyways. I hit that in camp just at 135 that I have to, you know, kind of keep my nutrition a little higher. Uh, I have to eat so much more to keep my weight up that sometimes I get down to under 40, you know, a month out from a 35-pound fight. So, so uh, fly, going down the flyway, I think that just give me extra hunger, you know what I mean? It's something like something to more focus on. Not that I'm just not focused, but I feel like the fear of not making the weight or the questions of if he can will help me maybe relight just more hunger that may a sled edge theory of, okay, I sacrificed this all camp. You know, rather than just eating pizza and sushi the week before the fight. So, you know, the hungry fighter always wins. Yeah, I, I agree. That's going to give you some extra hunger. What about, I got to throw in on this. How does it feel that you're jumping down the flyway, you put the whole division on notice, mm -hmm. and there's there's some haters who, you know, should you have this credibility in flyweight already, but the champ and the number one contender said that you're the fight they want the most. So how, how does that make you feel hearing that? Well, you know, being a former world champion myself and do it in the fashion that I did it and obviously went on a little skid, you know, sometimes things happen in life. But, you know, when the champ and the number one contender are calling you out, they know they know what the big fight is. They know the eyes that I bring to the division, both divisions, UFC. Um, so that's great. You know, I've obviously, you know, wanted to make this flyweight debut um, to be the best, not just compete. So uh, that's what I'm taking it. So, you know, the UFC gave me the title fight over a year ago. Obviously, you know, like we spoke on earlier, COVID took me out of it, you know, which was yep. unfortunate, but we have a pandemic going on and, uh, you know, it was out of my control. And obviously they went to a draw. And then the last fight, man, Brandon looked amazing in the fight. I thought he, you know, looked really well. And, you know, Davidson saying now that it's, you know, it won't be like that the next time. You know, he's trying to hold on to that. But Brandon really, really, um, you know, Sliced him, diced him up, and, you know, got the submission, which hats off to him. I think Brand Brandon's a great champ. Uh, excited for that yeah. future matchup. You know, the flyweight division has some guys in there. I I've trained with Ascar in Jersey, tough kid. Alexandra Pantajo's tough. 
you know, slated, uh, I think Alex Perez is the one that uh, took my spot in the Davidson fight once, you know, I had to pull out. Joseph Benavidez has been a longtime training partner and friend of mine. You know, and you got Kaya Car of France, which I think his name's Steven. I'm going to call him Steven because I don't like saying I'm fighting Kai. It's my son's name. So, yeah, right. Steven. Okay. At and number seven. I like it. And, and what's your plans? Let's say, uh, you know, you're going to get this dub. You're going to have some of these guys calling you out. It looks yeah. like it's, it could be this for the strap next. Yep. Both guys want you that are one and two. Mm-hmm. Then is it just uh, defend that flyway or. A lot of guys are calling you out in the bantamweight division too. It's a good weight class for you as well. Would you jump back up to bantamweight? That's something that I have yeah, focused on and, and thought about. I want to, you know, reclaim, you know, a title at flyweight. Go up, you know, and if, if it needs to bounce around, if there's injuries or, you know, obviously, you're the champion, so you have to defend that. You know, defend that, protect that at all costs. So that, you know, wherever I get the title at first. Is where I'll defend, and, and you know, but obviously I have the option to bounce around from flyweight and bantamweight. Um, very exciting divisions, you know. I think the bantamweight yeah. division is stacked, so there's a lot of matchups that I like in there. And obviously at the flyweight, you know, it's to go up there and, and help bring more eyes into the flyweight. It's something I can do. I feel like I can rule this division as well. And uh, just excited, man. Just getting back to, you know, training's been fun. This journey's been fun. You know, ups and downs. It's it's. You know, more experienced than ever. You know, I'm 30 years old now. So wow. what I've learned in my 20s, you know, I'm going to take into my 30s. And I just feel like this next chapter of my life is going to probably be the best one as far as career and just and vice versa. I agree. And uh, switch up the topics now from your, your flyweight breakdown there. I looked up some of the most searched things for Cody Garbrandt. And what a lot of people like to know about you, Cody, is what are your tattoos? Where are they from? How many does he have? So answer a few questions for us. How many tattoos do you have? Any new work as of late? And, uh, you know, uh, what's the latest artist you've been working with, et cetera? Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, my tattoos, uh, you know, kind of stand out. It's kind of hard to be hidden when you have, you know, your neck blasted. But, yeah, I work with a lot of tattoo artists, a lot of the ones out of here in Sacramento, Nate Westfall, Jesse in Roseville, um, you know, a few other that I've collected in Ohio. My buddy Dallas, he was an old boxing trainer that kind of tattooed me a lot um, as a teenager. And, you know, so obviously I love, love artists. I love artistry. I love just, you know, some of that they're able to, they're skillful. They're able to put on your skin. I've always been just kind of fascinated with that. My newest tattoo, I just got a Muhammad Ali portrait on the inside of my thigh. And uh, it's a portrait of him. And then it's a smaller portrait of him, like doing the rope-a-dope. Nice. Uh, and it's right by a Toro Gotti. One of, you know, he's my, some of my favorite uh, boxers. You know, yeah, so that I looks, look that up to so legit. Say like a Hollywood sleeve. Legit. I just got like face. You know what I mean? Just putting it together. I'm gonna leg sleeve it out. Um, but my next artist that I am going to be working with is Alicia Gore. She's out of New York. I'm gonna do my son's portrait. Nice. Whenever I do my son, she's amazing at portraits. I mean, all her work is just super dope. Uh, so I'm speaking to her about doing my son's portrait. Um, I'm trying to figure out the location. Where, where, uh, yeah, the location. Like, I want to do the ribs because I have the ribs, but then oh. again, it's uh, that's a tough one. And she's, like, I think, portrait more, you know, needs a more larger space, and not do it on the ribs. So we'll figure it out. You know, I usually try to get one after each fight. So I'm 16 weeks out from getting another tattoo. So <laughs> how many tasks do you have total? Do you lose count at this point? Honestly, I've lost count. Um, so many years ago, I think it goes into like. If I really sat down and thought about how many hours of tattoos you oh, have, okay. I mean, because I can kind of look at, all right, this was four, this was five, this was, I had 30 in my arm, I had 30 in my back. So it kind of just estimated that like, as many hours it would be easier to do yeah, than tattoos. Yeah. Okay, got it. We'll, we'll switch up the topic a little bit. We had to cover the tattoos, but we want to get that no love bully update. Yes. We see you on the stories with your dogs all yep. the time. We know you got the business, you got your dogs. What's the latest? The latest on No Love Bullies, I have No Love Bullies Legion. That's a breeding that we did with my girl Bam Bam and then Bossy Kennels um, Jumanji. And we created a chocolate tri, chocolate merle, chocolate tri merle, sorry. And that's a stud of our kennel. So, um, you know, the merles are getting really popular um, throughout the world. But No Love Bullies is doing amazing. It's family ran, my mother, sister, brother. I mean, basically, it's all my family back in Ohio. They help out, pitch in. But yeah. um, my mom's the, you know, she's the she's the captain out there. She runs yeah. the ship. And, um, 
you know the the facility is amazing we're actually just doing phase two of the builds adding another 40 yard 40 foot um indoor outdoor um runs you know weather permitted we have ac and heat so in, in the buildings you know obviously with ohio it's yeah. brutal winters yeah. and humid uh summers so you know the dogs they come first and uh we just had a breeding with big linda Big Linda and Big Future. Linda. We use Future from uh, Florida State Bullies. We use one of his studs because we're still getting a lot of our uh, studs. And so when I have my own studs, then I can have, you know, no love bullies and no love bullies and put them together. So right now, I'm outsourcing, I outcrossing guess, yeah, the studs. Right, yeah. And um, we have some females that we're coming back. We have some studs that we've done putt back deals with uh, to get new blood in. So right now, it's about building that foundation, you know, so you have yeah. foundation dogs and you have your foundation dogs that you they grow and then you breed them together for a certain look. Um, obviously, first and foremost, I breed for temperament because I'm, you know, putting these dogs into a lot of family homes. Yeah. Um, that's what I prefer to sell to rather than, you know, kennels and other breeders. But you know, selling to other breeders, it, it's been it's been good too. You know, I make sure that I know where all my dogs go. It's all contracted. You know, they keep updated, um, updates with the dogs. So um, that's that's going well. That's a passion of mine, and I kind of was uh, brought into like breeding the bullies was through other horrible breeders. So I never thought I would be a breeder, but I just saw the culture and just the way that a lot of these dogs were handled and a lot of the business in the dog breeding industry. Um, how it ran i just like man there's there's got to be a better ways so i feel like i you know have a big strong pool and i can like obviously you know call people out on their bullshit you know if that so yep. first and foremost you know we're good faith breeders you know and that's not to say a lot of them but there is a lot of good breeders in the world that you know i worked with and helped me out and studied game you know i i say dogs pedigrees and just you know put them together to get the healthiest dog that i can create yeah and then put it into another family you know does, does the temperament come from the, that dog itself that if the dad has a good temperament that means they will too how do you figure right. that out yeah exactly so a lot of dogs have prey drive that's just given you know yeah. um but the bullies for the most part i've never met a bully that was you know human aggressive you know um you know maybe maybe small dogs are prey like squirrels things like that cats mm -hmm. but that's they have prey drive in them but the bullies were bred to be nanny dogs you know they have basically the drive taken out of them you know, they're not like a American and pit bull terrier um, that has a crazy drive. You know, yep. they look like pit bulls, but pit bulls are only 50, 60 pounds. You know, these American bullies get, you know, 130, 140 pounds or, yeah, you know, big. females get 100, you know, 115. Um, so they don't have that drive. They can't carry that muscle around. So they don't have that drive. So they're family dogs. Honestly, they looked at that intimidating, fearful looking dog, you know, and that's why I got into them years ago. So I wanted this dog. A I travel a lot. Timmy, you see that kind of dog, you're like, holy shit, that is a beast of a dog. Yeah. You know, like Thick looks neck. like a little line, like a street yeah. line. Like my boy Canelo, he's 135 pounds, and he's just huge. And he literally is one of the nicest dogs, like temperament yeah. wise. Like I can say, you know, as a whole for mine, I can put any of my dogs in a kindergarten, you know, class, uh, and yeah. they'll be fine. You know. They, they can. My son's been around every single dog that I've had, um, you know, until they go out to the to, to the bully barn. And we get them all trained up and just, you know, enjoy. I, I love the breed so much. The dogs have been such a positive um, light in my life, you know, just having them and raising them. Just the love that they have for you, you know, it's just like they always come home and you're happy. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. They, they're happy when they see you, just like the littlest things, you know. And they look, at, they look over for you for water and food and shelter and protection just like a child so um it's it's been just a great journey to be able to have my family help me out on my visions and dreams and passion and also help you know first better the breed but also get better breeding standards and protocols ethicals and or ethics and morals yep sorry ethics and morals so so last thing before we move on to Nola boys, how many dogs are you selling? These are the the purebred style yep. boys. I'm sure for a guy like you, when you post it on anything about Nola boys, yeah. that you probably have people hitting you up. Hey, right. I, want, I want a dog. I want a dog. You can't sell to everybody, right? Yeah. So how does that how does that work? Yeah, I can't sell to everybody. You know, like I said, I I really really like to put my dogs into to family homes, knowing they're going to be at, how they're going to be treated. Um, you know, because they're everything to me. So you know, obviously we you know fill it out and it's all contracted you know like that dog has to be taken care of we want updates you know like you know we want to be able to 
buy it. if you can't take care of it, you can't just sell the dog. We would be able to buy it back off you, so we know where the dog goes, yeah. things like that. So I mean, we're just very, very particular in who we choose on on buying a dog. And like I said, everyone's not. We've had dogs return because they're like, oh my gosh, we, we you know, we didn't know what we were getting into. Like it's yeah. a lot of work. Like it's a, you know, getting a dog, any dog, is a full time. You know, you raise basic. It, you raise it right. You have to. You know. You, have to be there when you have to go out of town you have to make sure you're gonna you know it's it's a huge commitment but man they have just brought so much happiness so uh and then again i've had people that have reached out to me that had dogs for you know 12 13 years and put them down or get a new dog and you know they never thought they could love another dog like they did and they have you know a no love bully and they're like this dog is the best like the temperament so just well behaved listens well and i can say that for almost all my customers i've they've been super happy with me and that's what i wanted to do i don't want to go in there i want to have good business you know be reliable honorable loyal to them you know to us they come back we've had um a few clients that have bought three or four dogs off us wow yeah i mean it's like it's good it's always have repeat customers and then yeah, have them come for three and four like we had a, a family out of florida and texas um now four three and four dogs from us all off same litter different litters um you know and they kind of like maybe they wanted to start doing some breeding too so like just oh, okay. educate them on you know the things to do and i've had great mentors in the game you know top dog bullies from alley they've been around for they've decades been. bossy kennels cat from bossy kennels um there's so many people that are bigger in the game that's been around for you know 15 years of dog breeding that's seen probably the craziest yeah, shit go on in the industry and still have a good reputation throughout the world. You know, a lot of these dogs are um, imported, you know, mm -hmm. are shipped to like different different countries. You know, UK is really big. Their, their bully ban was um, uplifted a few years ago, so they're just getting a lot of imported dogs. And, you know, so it's, uh, it's, it's great to see. Like I have dogs that shipped to Hawaii. I've shipped to, uh, last week we just shipped one to the UK. Um, a few to the awesome. UK, Scotland, so it's been nice, you know. And obviously, the ones that are in Cali, I get to see. I have a couple that are, you know, close to here in SAC. I get to go and visit them oh, and just cool. see them mature and grow. I'm like, oh, wow, it's one of my productions. So it's it's pretty cool to see um, how happy the families are, but also then see the gr dog grow. Oh, yeah, of course. Love it, love it. Thank you guys for watching my new podcast. This is the No Love Show. Um, this is not the official name, like I said, but we are going to take it to YouTube and to my Instagram to see suggestions as to what the show should be called let us know if you want to do anything different you know we're just you know trying this out i'm very excited to keep giving you more and more um, updates throughout the fight career everything that's going on and uh, just having fun doing this podcast hello hey but whoa dude this is so cool sorry guys doing a podcast but wow i can't wait i can't wait to come home and see that i can't wait to come home and see that it's what? It's a party. It's a party? Okay, well, Daddy's going to do his podcast and come home and party. Yeah, I love it, man. I can't wait. It's so cool. What's, wow, that's so cool. Okay, Daddy will call you back in a little bit, okay? What's that? I'm at, it's a, this is a microphone. See, Daddy's doing his podcast. And then I'm going to come home and party. <laughs> I love you. All right, see ya.